from Brain Voyager users. In this video, we would like to have a look at the options to adapt the GLM modeling. First, we start off with a very simple option that basically every Brain Voyager user analyzing functional data can utilize. Again, we use Brain Voyager QX version 231 64-bit on Windows. As a sample dataset, we open the CG dataset that is also used within Brain Voyager's Getting Started Guide. First, we open the Talairach or normalized version of the 3D anatomy of subject CG. Second, we link the corresponding Talairach VTC dataset created for the subject's functional run. So now we have anatomical and functional data available. As most or many of you know, you can now easily create a GLM analysis by opening the General Linear Model Single Study dialog and clicking the Define Predictors button. Assuming that the right condition is discarded, which in this case is the first condition defined fixation, you obtain a design showing three predictors, left, right and both visual field images. In this case, we want to adapt this model by adding so-called conform predictors. First off, the conform predictors for the motion, the motion detected during the pre-processing of the functional data. How to do this best? I will show you in the next steps. First off, I show you where to find the motion predictors in your dataset. When you click the load button and check your data folder, you will find there is usually a uh, SDM file called subject name underscore 3DMC. And this exactly contains the six motion predictors, three rotation and three translation parameters of the function run processed. Of course, if there are multiple functional runs, you will find multiple 3DMC SDM files. Here we load the 3DMC of subject CG. There's only one functional run here. As you can see, there are six predictors in total. And of course, in the name of the predictors, you see three translation for x, y, and z axis and three rotation parameters, again for x, y, z axis. This is how they look like. Now, practically, it is advised to z-transform or z-normalize these predictors before adding them to your standard protocol-based model. This can be done in the options of the single study GLM dialog. So we open the predictor function step and click the z-transform define predictors, transform button. We apply this to all currently loaded predictors. This changes the shape and also the meaning of the predictors quite a bit. And you can see that the previously flat lines are now not flat anymore. And of course, the scale has also changed because it now represents standard deviation units instead of millimeters and degrees of rotation. Meaning now that each of the scales of the six predictors means exactly the same. Now we have to save this new adapted motion predictor model by clicking the save button and for instance calling it 3dmc z or z transformed. Now we can proceed to the next step and load or create the standard model. In this case I have already created a model but let me just create it anew by showing the protocol and just clicking define predictors which again gives us our standard model of three predictors, left, right, and both visual field images. And now we have the option to use the Add button to add our prepared Z-transformed um, motion predictors as confounds. So now we get in total nine predictors, three standard protocol-based predictors, and three standardized motion confounds. How does Brain Voyager know whose predictor to treat as confounds and which predictors to treat as standard or main predictors. In principle, every set of predictors that is added will automatically be used as confounds. You can always check this by opening the options, clicking the masking tab and checking the first confound predictor. In this case, number four is the first confound predictor, meaning that the first three predictors are main predictors and everything following from the fourth predictor on is seen as a predictor of no interest or so-called confound. This will also show later in the overlay GLM dialog. Let's save this model. If 
for instance, automatically with a name of the function run, or we could also call it three preds and motion. It's usually advised to give a model name that really is easily showing what is really contained in the model. Now we click the go button to start the GLM modeling. And quite easily get a result. And how to observe this now would be, for instance, to open the overlay GLM dialog and check the entry. And here you see, in combination with your blue colored uh, standard model predictors, you get six additional grayed out and not checked predictors, meaning these are predictors of no interest that are used in the modeling of the GLM. So they definitely change the result in a, in a way, but they're not automatically checked. So now we can, of course, use any contrast that can be done in a standard model, but we could in principle also check the um, check the corresponding uh, effect of the confounds if you would like to do so, but we don't have to. So this would be a very simple option to add confounds, and of course as confounds you can not only add motion predictors, but also any other kind of predictor you may have in mind that varies with the volumes of a uh, single run. For instance, in some cases you may be interested in extracting data from a certain region, for instance from the ventricles or from the whole gray or white matter, and to add this as a confound, which I will show in the next video. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching and happy brain voyaging.